I just did a secret collab with Mike Shinoda and it was one of the most incredible experiences of my life. We went to Metropolis Studios in London and got an amazing song recorded that I'll show you later, but there were definitely some pretty big challenges along the way. Not 100% sure if I'm gonna be able to do the session. So I got an email about a week ago from someone on Mike Shinoda's team. If you're not sure who Mike Shinoda is, you've really got to listen to Linkin Park and all of his solo stuff on Spotify because it's incredible. He said they're filming a live recording session in London to promote his new single, but there is one pretty big catch which is that I'm not going to be playing bass. I know, it's pretty unbelievable, but he specifically said that he wants me to play the 230 string bass and also the throat bass. Now, some of you who have been here for a while might know that I've done a little bit of throat bass in the past, but I haven't really sang for the past few years at all, so I am feeling pretty rusty. I've also been completely busy for the past week promoting my signature bass with Schechter, meaning I now only really have three days to prepare for a recording session with one of my childhood heroes. They also told me that I have to keep this collab top secret, so I've got to keep my lips sealed for now. I practiced for about six hours each day. I had to learn two songs and the piano parts weren't too crazy, but I wanted to know them like the back of my hand. I also knew I was gonna be a little bit nervous in the studio and the best way for me to deal with that is always to be extra prepared. After three days of intense practice, I felt as ready as I could ever be, but there was an unpleasant surprise in store for me. So I just woke up and my throat is feeling pretty scratchy and dry. Not 100% sure if I'm gonna be able to do the session. If any of you are singers, you know just how worrying it is to wake up on the morning of an important performance with a scratchy or dry throat. I tried singing a bit and I noticed that my range had gone down quite a lot. And overall, the tone wasn't sounding that great. But I tried not to panic and I decided the best thing to do was probably to start just warming up my voice really gently and slowly. I was pretty sure I wasn't ill because I had no other symptoms and I'd basically been in quarantine for the past few days practicing. So after doing that for a few hours, I headed over to Metropolis Studios and prayed that I'd be able to sing okay-ish. When I arrived at the studio, I was immediately impressed with the quality of this legendary place. The grand piano in the corner was famously used by Freddie Mercury on a regular basis, and this place has hosted the likes of the Rolling Stones, Elton John, and Madonna, just to name a few. I was one of the first band members to arrive, but pretty soon, Paul Davids walked in, which was a really nice surprise. Some of you might know Paul as a guitar teacher and content creator with over 3 million subscribers, and also one of the most soothing voices in the world one by one, and we'll see how the progression is supporting the surprisingly interesting melody. So now that Paul had me feeling relaxed, it was time to meet the other band members, including Ellie Dixon, Sam Arrow, Diego Riera, and Leona Jorgensen. They were all extremely nice and talented people. We got along really well, and I could tell that this was gonna be a really good session. <laughs> After a few run-throughs, things were feeling really good and we actually kind of got a little bit carried away and went into this spontaneous reggae version of Mike's new single. Little do we know that Mike was actually in the control room at this point and was probably starting to wonder what on earth he'd got himself into. But a few minutes later, Mike walked in and we all started fangirling. So we've done, um, we did Sydney and we did Los Angeles and then just did Berlin and then here today. The second song that we usually add it's been a different one each time, and the group dynamic affects how you play it a lot. Um, and then I walk in here, and you guys are like nailing it right off the bat. I'm like, oh, okay, so that's already done. <laughs> no pressure to get out early, but if we could get a nap before dinner. Jim is, Jim is, angling. Jim is angling for a nap. Up until this point, I actually thought this whole thing might be some elaborate scam, but I realized now that it was real and we were actually gonna be recording with him. We introduced ourselves and I think we were all a little bit nervous at first, or at least I was, but pretty soon we realized that Mike is a really down-to-earth and humble guy and we felt pretty relaxed. We actually had a long chat about all kinds of things like social media, AI, and the modern music industry. And then after some sound checks, we started running takes of the first song. No 
The song we were recording is called Already Over, which is Mike's new single. We were doing a really cool live version, which will be released on all streaming platforms on January 5th. It was really interesting to watch Mike in the studio and just kind of see how he worked with everyone to get a really great performance. After about five or six takes of Already Over, I think things were starting to sound pretty amazing. <laughs> The full video of that song is on Mike's YouTube channel, so make sure you check that out. So at the end of the session, we had a little bit of time left over, and we ended up making some pretty funny videos with Mike. So you might remember that I really like In The End by Linkin Park, and I actually did a cover of it on this channel with Burnt. <laughs> Well, I might have started playing it on that legendary grand piano that I mentioned earlier, and here's how Mike reacted. Dude, dude. Okay, I'm so sorry to like interrupt you. I'm your biggest fan. Oh, I, I love this song. Uh, the slap bass part is incredible. I actually wrote some words to go with the slap bass part. Okay, yeah, let's hear it. Can I, can I do it with you? Yeah, okay, yeah, it goes like this, it goes like this. It starts with slap bass. I don't know why. It doesn't even matter how much. <laughs> Once all of those shenanigans were over, it was time for Mike to leave. So we took some photos, said our goodbyes and thank yous, and then went to the pub to celebrate. Should we do a serious one? Yeah, super I'm serious. A press super photo. Yeah, press photo. That's That's very serious. Serious. Overall, it was an absolutely incredible experience that I'll never forget. My friends and I used to blast Linkin Park at school, and they've been one of my favorite bands for a really long time. So to have this opportunity to meet him and also record a song with him was just absolutely amazing. They say you should never meet your heroes, but I'm really glad that I met Mike because he was so humble and down to earth, and you can tell that he really wants to help out the next generation of musicians. So head over to Mike's YouTube channel to watch the full video and make sure that you stream it when it comes out on all platforms on January 5th. Thank you so much for your support. I'd never be able to do these types of things if you didn't watch and support my videos. Also, please tap like on this video. Maybe if I reach 25,000 likes, Mike will do a slap bass and rap collab with me. I've got a lot of cool videos coming up for you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.